Now, the next topic is the design of groundwater well fields. As you may remember from the previous lecture, uh, groundwater well fields have to meet a certain um, a service demand or the demand of the community, municipality, or the city it, where it has to supply water. Okay, so it involves the use of multiple groundwater wells. And the design of a well field is a multi-step process. Uh, but first, let's discuss the simplifying assumptions used in the design of uh, well, well fields. First, is, first assumption is that all wells will, will be using the same pumping rate. Right? So all wells will be set to use the same pumping range for the simplification, of course, of the calculations. Second assumption is that when you are, uh, when you are designing your wells, you are designing them to avoid exceeding a certain level of drawdown. Right? So drawdown is the lowering of the groundwater table. And you won't do you you don't want to exceed the allowable drawdown because it can damage your aquifer. It can induce a permanent settlement in your aquifers and it can reduce the capacity of your aquifers and so on. <coughs> Right, and of course, you have to note that drawdown on a particular site is caused by drawdown from the well, from a well, from the well itself that's pumping on that well site, and also due to drawdown uh, cost, which is a result of the influence of nearby wells right so what we do here is we do a 50 50 budgeting so the 50 percent of the allowable drawdown will go to the well on that well site and then the rest of the budget for the allowable drawdown will be allocated for the influence of nearby groundwater wells now the third assumption is that we only need to calculate drawdown in the central well all right in a well field we just need to be concerned with the center well because it is the well that will experience the largest drawdown as it has the most number of wells surrounding it. So this normally involves a regional pattern which I'll try to draw. Right, so let's say this is well 1, uh, plan view, well 2, well 3, well 4, well 5. Right now, each well has a oh shit. Ah, solid. Now, each well, right? The biggest drawdown that for example, well 1, the biggest drawdown that you can measure in well 1 is at the center. As you go outward, you get less and less drawdown. Right? But <clears throat> and you can actually draw the influence of drawdown of well 1. Let's say this is the limit of its influence. That's for well 1. And then well 2 will also have its uh, radius of influence of drawdown. 
and then wealth 3 will have a certain uh, radius of influence of drawdown and then well 4 and then well 5 so it's like drawing a Venn diagram and at the center is well 1 which has, a, has the most number of overlaps with other uh, nearby wells so it is natural to anticipate that the central well or well 1 will experience the most drawdown in the well field. So this is our priority calculation. Right, so those are our three assumptions in designing a well field. <coughs> now let's start. Alright, so this is a three step process. Actually, four steps. Um, all right, let's start with uh, the equations that are relevant in this problem. First is the Thies equation. This is a powerful uh, equation which relates the behavior of your well to the behavior of your aquifer. Or rather, the behavior of your well to the intrinsic properties of your aquifer. So it has multiple forms. This form of this equation is S is your drawdown. Q is your pumping rate of your well. And then T is the transmissivity of your aquifer or the intrinsic property of your aquifer. And WU is your well function. Right? So, you can see here that as you increase your pumping rate, your well pumping rate, S also increases. Okay? So, the more pumping rate you have, the more drawdown you get. Conversely, if you have a, an aquifer that has a high transmissivity, for example, you have a thick aquifer or a aquifer that has a high permeability like a sandstone aquifer. When you have a high transmissivity aquifer, you get less drawdown. right? Because essentially, your aquifer is... The higher the, the, the transmissivity of your aquifer, the higher the overall capacity of your aquifer to supply groundwater right so the bigger it is the less stressed your aquifer is when you are drawing out water this second form of this equation is uh, it's, it's just a rearrangement where your drawdown is your primary variable right now let's move to the other equations. Right, this is this equation is the well function. Now note that the well function has two parts here. All right. Yeah, part one and part two. And well function is quite an abstract. Uh, concept, but it sort it describes the influence of a well on a particular well site. All right. Uh, you can imagine the value of u. U is a, it's just a parameter for the well function. Remember that. Always remember that the smaller the u, the bigger the u. When you have a, the bigger the value of the u. Uh, the smaller the influence of your pumping well on a on a well site. Say, for example, R, R is the distance 
of your well from a particular well site or a per or a particular location. All right. So the bigger the distance of a certain well from a well site. Uh, the less the influence of that well on that well site. So you have a bigger U. Okay. And then SY is the is the specific yield. Alright. Specific yield is an intrinsic property of an aquifer. It refers to how much water you can extract from an aquifer on a per unit basis, all right? Like 0.2 of the total volume of an aquifer, or 0.1. Okay. So the bigger the 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 bigger the specific yield, <coughs> all right? The more water your aquifer hit, the more water your aquifer has. And consequently, the bigger the SY, the bigger the U. Right? So, when you have a big U, uh, the influence of well is less. Okay? So, when you have a, when you have a high specific yield or you have a, a lot of groundwater, your, your well will, won't, really aff won't have a lot of impact on your aquifer. Right, so that's how it works. So uh, the other parameters here is the big T. Uh, also, this is also the transmissivity. So the bigger the transmissivity, the smaller the U. Okay, the smaller the U. The smaller the U. When you have a small U, you get um. A minute. All right, uh, let's just skip that uh, well function. Uh, I'll try to go back to that topic later. Now, the next equation is the transmissivity, which is basically the hydraulic conductivity of your aquifer times the thickness of your aquifer. And then the other equation is the number of wells you need, which is basically a function of the service demand that you have to meet in your well site project. Now let's uh, proceed with the first step, which is the calculation of initial allowable well pumping rate for all wells. So this is basically our first estimate for the well pumping rate for all the wells in our well field. Right, so these are the given. We have hydraulic conductivity. We have aquifer thickness. All right, so the actual aquifer, the actual saturated aquifer thickness here is 30. But in here, we, we factored in the drawdown that will occur in the aquifer. So the maximum allowable drawdown is 3 for this aquifer. Alright. But normally, we don't really uh, exceed. We only reach uh, 3 meters of drawdown in the well sites. For the rest, all right. As you go in other spots within the well field, you have smaller drawdown. So we estimated that the average drawdown for the whole well field is around just half of the maximum allowable allowable drawdown. Okay, so this is our estimated aquifer thickness when we factor in the drawdown. All right. <coughs> Transmissivity is just Hydraulic conductivity times aquifer thickness, we get 1,425 square meters per day. 
pumping time of 365 days. Alright, uh, this is what we normally use when our project is a long term. We use a minimum of 365 days. R or distance of the well from the center point of the well site is 0.3 meters. Right? So note that <coughs> in here we are just calculating. Uh, the drawdown of well one on its own well site. On its own well site. And this radius of of point three meters is just the is just due to the size of the of the well one. Okay. So well one has a diameter of 0.6 meters. Okay. Uh, so let's make a new drawing. So you can imagine this is. Let's say this is well site one. Right. This is well site one. So that's the center point. So this is the center point of well site 1. And let's imagine that well 1 is actually a huge, it's a large well. Sorry for the imperfect. Yeah, let's just use this one. Alright, so. So you can imagine this is this center point is well site one. This huge thing is the whole uh, size of well one, right? So it's it's normal to have large diameter wells for groundwater wells, right? It it's, it it ranges from 0.3 to one meters or more. Because you have to insert pumping equipment in your wells and so on. So, so let's say well one diameter is diameter D is point point six meters. All right. So the radius of well one to the center of well site one is R is. Point three, uh, point three meters, point three meters. All right, so that's how it works. Now, if you have uh, another well somewhere else, the radius from the well site to one center point to, to the another well is measured from center to center, or uh, I mean, sorry, from from center to the it's either from center to the other part or from center to the center of the other well. It won't matter that much because it, it, they're already too far. So let's say this is around 20 meters. Okay. Okay, so distance or R will always depend on what reference point you are talking about. And what well are you talking about? So this distance is always relative. This this is a relative value. That depends on what well site is your reference point, and what well are you talking about. <coughs> All right. Now other other inputs. S Y is your specific yield. Okay. The bigger the S Y, the more water you can get from your aquifer. Uh, UW is the well function value for well one. So what we did here is we just use uh, we just use this equation. All right, so R squared R squared times SY so R squared times SY divided by um, 
transmissivity and time right and and four now this value is uh, well function part one so we basically just plugged in the the value of the well function part two to this equation all right so negative point five seven seven two minus minus the well function value in part two times oh sorry minus uh, logarithmic ln for ln of the value for the part two for the well function value part two of well one now sw here is our target drawdown for well number one all right so remember this simplifying of assumption all right so the maximum allowable drawdown for this whole site is three meters all right three meters is the max now if you apply this 50 50 budgeting per site all right so it means you have to allocate so the drawdown that the maximum drawdown that well one can induce on its own well site is just 50% of the maximum. So that's uh, three, three, three times 0.5. So we only have 0.5, 1.5 meters of allowable drawdown for well site one due to well site one itself, All right? So so it's it's uh we are not yet arriving at the total drawdown for well site one. We are just talking about the drawdown that well site one can induce on its own well site. So so this is just a partial number at the moment. All right. So that's our allowable drawdown for well site assuming assuming the 50 50 percent 50 50 allocation now we have all the necessary inputs for the thesis equation all right so since we are designing the pumping rate we use this form of the thesis equation. All right, so we just use this form, which is QW times uh, four pi times transmissivity times uh, target uh, drawdown SW divided by the well function. All right, so once we plug in all those values, okay, once we plug in all those values, we get a design uh, pumping rate of 1,493 cubic meters per day. All right, so that is our initial pumping rate for all the wells. Okay, remember, it's just an initial estimate at this moment. This number will change later on. As you will see, <clears throat> so that's that's our initial design uh, design pumping rate for all wells. So let's uh, park that number for now and let's move to step number two. So the service demand that we must uh, meet in this site is eighty one liters per second, which can be translated into cubic meters per day which is 6998 cubic meters per day okay so we have to meet this number and what we just have to do here is just divide the service demand by the initial design rate by the initial design pumping rate of the wells and what we get is 4.68 so we can't have 4.68 wells 
but we can have five wells so we always have to round up uh, this number into a into an integer all right you can use the round up function in excel so s4 is the number zero is the number of decimal number of digits in the decimal places right so that is the number of wells we have to make five wells for the site that can initially pump 1493 cubic meters per day right so that's uh, that's that's the general uh, design or the initial design of our wells now let's move on to the uh, bloody part of this problem step 3 is the calculation of well spacing or distance Okay, so this is the final step in the well field design. <clears throat> Alright. So again, let's review the relevant equations. Alright, let's assume, <clears throat> let's review the relevant equations for this problem. Uh, first is the Thies equation for multiple wells. So note that this, this version of uh, Thies equation is just for one well. All right. Now for the Thies equation for multiple wells, this is just the same, same as this one, except that the well function here is a summation of all the well functions of all the wells in the field. Right, so I mean, sorry, sorry for the uh, lack of context. What's gonna happen here in the calculation of well spacing or distance is uh, is that we are uh, designing the or we are considering the Sorry. Uh, let's go back to the to the last assumption. All right. All right. So we use these uh, last first two assumptions. So, okay. So we apply these two assumptions. Now the last assumption is we only calculate to total drawdown in the central well, as it will experience the largest drawdown because it has the most number of wells surrounding it. All right. So that's what we do in the last step. Okay. So in the last step. Last step, we only care about the total drawdown in well site 1. Okay, so we don't care about the total drawdown in well site 2 or in well site 3 because uh, well site 1 will experience the biggest drawdown in the well field. So if we can actually uh, design uh, the, the well field such that well, well 1 well site 1 will experience allowable uh, acceptable drawdown it means that the other well sites will will experience even less drawdown than compared to compared to let to well site 1 okay so we only care about well site 1 here okay but remember that the drawdown in well site 1 is a combined drawdown caused by well the by well 1 itself and also the influence of nearby of nearby wells like well two, well three, well four, and well five. Okay, so this is a basically we sum up the influence of all the wells that affect well set one. Okay, so hence this sum, summation equation. Okay, so we have five wells, so hence the summation of five. Uh, five iterations here okay so we have uh, five well functions to, to sum in this uh, these equation okay so 
the well, so the well function formula for well one is still the same, all right? So this is for well one. So this is the well function of well one with respect to well site one. So it's essentially the same as what we did in the first step. Now, <coughs> now the well function for well two is a lot or the well function for wells 2, 3, 4, 5 is slightly more complex because right uh, let's resume <coughs> this is the or rather the sets uh, the functions that are involved in the well function of of wells 2, 3, and Two, three, four, and five. All right. Note that. Note that since we have a radial arrangement, right? Note that since we have a radial arrangement, uh, with respect to to well site one. All the other wells are just equidistant. Okay, so they have the same, uh, they will have more or less the same distance with respect to well site 1 because they will be arranged in a radial pattern. So they have essentially identical uh, well function values. Okay, as you can see here. <coughs> Right, so now, so we can calculate the well function value for well site 1. Okay, so this is, this is just the same as what we calculated earlier. Alright, same value. I mean, same value because we are still talking about well site 1 with the spec. Uh, we are still talking about well 1 with the spec to well site 1. Okay, so that's, uh, that's also what we did here. I mean, in the first part, we were just uh, thinking about well site 1, uh, well, well 1 with, with the spec to well site 2, well, with respect to well site 1. All right. <clears throat> so, so much for the tongue twister. Now, the well function values for wells 2, 3, 4, and 5 are slightly different because, because we don't know really what is there. We don't know yet what is there. Sorry. This should be nine point six one three Alright, so the well function part 2 values for wells 2, 3, 4, and 5 is just taken from this equation. Alright? But since we don't know yet r square r or the distance of these wells from well site 1, okay? So in here, r, r is, still a var is, an, is still an unknown variable here. Okay? And we also don't know the actual value of uh, of the well function part two. So we don't really. Ex this is still a variable, and this is still also a variable. All right. So 
So now for uh, well one, we know what is the well function value for well function part one value for well site one. Okay, so this is just still the same as what we did previously. Okay. <coughs> So now ne the, the next step here is to uh, obtain more, uh, just complete basically the input values. So again, in uh, well site 1, our target drawdown is 3 meters if we are to consider all, if we are to consider the drawdown from well from well one itself and the drawdown from all other neighboring wells okay so the target drawdown now is three meters okay so the difference here is that in part one part one our target drawdown is just 1.5 meters because we are only considering the drawdown caused by well one now in part three we are considering now all the drawdown in that that uh, all the drawdown all the component drawdowns that will influence well site one. So we set it as three meters. Okay, and then the final pumping rate of the well is also modified here. Okay, so remember that. We can't have an integer for number of wells. Okay. Alright, so we can't have uh, we can't have four point six wells, so we rounded up we rounded it up to five wells. Okay. Now we can't we can't use any more uh, this value for the final pumping rate because if you multiply 5 by the initial pumping rate, you get a total pumping rate of 7,466 uh, cubic meters per day, okay, which is excessive compared to our target. Alright, so groundwater is... The mentality in groundwater is we have to conserve it as a resource. So as much as possible, we have to avoid being excessive here. So okay, so as much as possible, we just want to stick to the service demand number. Okay, so what we do here is we just divide the service demand by five, and we get the final. We get the final pumping rate. Okay, so we get a num a smaller number, which is one thousand three hundred ninety nine point sixty eight uh, cubic meters per day. Okay, so that's the number here. Okay, so that's our service demand. Uh, I mean, that's our final pumping rate. And then finally, <clears throat> uh, we can now solve for the well function of the other wells. Okay, all we have to do is use the this equation shown below. So this we just have to use this this equation. All right. So we know S one S one is three meters. Okay, so that's our target drawdown for. That's our target total drawdown for well site 1 when we consider all these five wells. So S1 is 3 meters. Uh, QW is 
Alright? Uh, QW is 1,299. Transmissivity is just the same, okay? We, we're still dealing with the same aquifer. So, we just use the same transmissivity value, uh, which is here, okay? 1,425 1, uh, square meters per day. Okay, so we basically know, we basically know this part, alright? So, we know this side of the equation. Now, we can solve for, uh, so we can get the value of uh, the summation of the well functions. So, S, uh, sorry. So, we just have to rearrange re this equation so that the summation summation of well functions is just equal to <coughs> to 3 to S1 or 3 meters divided by the pumping rate times 4 times pi and times the transmissivity. Alright, so that is the summation for all the well functions. So that is W U plus U2 plus up to U5. Alright, so that is the summation. Now, to get the individual uh, well function values for u2, u3, u4, and u5. So w, u2, which is equal to w, u5, u3, and so on. So, so on. <laughs> Sorry. And so on. <coughs> so what we have to do here is we just have to subtract the value of so that's just equal to ah so that's just equal to w w u one plus u five uh minus the well function part of u1 and then divided by 4 okay so we basically ha just have to take this number so this is the summation of all the well functions so first step is we remove the value of well function 1 of, of well 1 so we get 20 and then so this value is the summation this is uh, u u2 plus u5 okay so since u2 so note that well function of u2 is just equal to well function of u3 and so on we can just divide this value by 4 okay right so that is the individual well function values of the other wells 5.098 all right so now we can calculate the the final well function for all the wells okay so we just right so we just uh invert this equation to get the uw per for for each well all right so now 
once we have these values, we can now solve for R. So basically, U. Okay, so U2 or U3 or U4 or U5 is just equal to 9.61 times 10 to the negative 8 times R squared. Okay, so that's. Uh, so R is just equal to U. Or any of the U, 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 you can pick U2, U3, U4, U5. They're all the same anyway. So, that value divided by 9.61307 raised um, times 10 raised to negative 8. Right? And then we square root. Alright, so that is the value of R or the distance that she or the distance of the uh, wells in the well field. Alright, so that is the ideal spacing of all your well, wells in the well field. Alright, so uh, I understand this is a rather messy uh, and a bit confusing uh, method. So I, I don't really exp I don't really expect you to perfect this in one try. So I actually tried this problem like four times before I figured it out but at least uh, try to expose yourself uh, to this kind of problem right so just try to expose yourself to the problem so in the future in case you encounter this kind of problem in your work you're more or less familiar with how to solve this problem okay so the next video we will be discussing wellhead protection areas and then after that uh, we will be talking about the economic feasibility studies.